In this video, we'll continue our investigation of former Native American sites in the Chicago region. This time we'll be exploring something different. A reported effigy mound said to be in the remarkable shape of a serpent, swallowing an egg. Located along the east bank of the Des Plaines River in Thatcher Woods Forest Preserve in Cook County, Illinois. Does this remarkable effigy mound exist? Was it made by humans in the distant past? Can we still find this elusive earthwork amidst the trees and brush that line the river? Please join us as we examine the Thatcher Woods Serpent Mound. Primary sources for this video include the 1991 book, Chicago Before History, The Prehistoric Archaeology of a Modern Metropolitan Area, by Charles W. Markman, the 1984 paper, Effigy Mounds of Northern Illinois, an analysis of an endangered cultural resource, by Carol A. Boris, the 1995 paper, Astronomical Alignments Claim to Exist on the Eastern North American Prehistoric Earthworks and the Evidence and Arguments Against Them, by James A. Marshall, published in the Ohio Archaeologist Periodical. Thatcher Woods Savannah Restoration Project Archives, held at the University of Illinois Chicago Circle Campus. Period Newspaper Articles, Period Plat Maps and Topographical Maps. In the mid-1930s, as part of a volunteer project, husband and wife team Theron Wasson and Isabel Bassett Wasson were conducting a detailed table survey of the Thatcher Woods Forest Preserve set along the east bank of the Des Plaines River in River Forest in Cook County, Illinois. Both Isabel and Theron Wasson were petroleum geologists by training. Isabel was one of the first women of this profession in the United States. Isabel had recently retired in order to raise their three children at the couple's home in River Forest. They were also both avid naturalists, and in their volunteer work for the Cook County Forest Preserve District, they utilized their mapping and surveying skills to good effect. While the Wassons worked, they noticed sinuous lumps and bumps in the terrain in a wooded area just tens of feet from the river on the western edge of the preserve. They thought they could make out a figure of some sort. After more careful inspection of the earthwork, they believed it to be in the form of a snake or a serpent. And much like the famous serpent effigy mound in Ohio, this snake too seemed to have gaping jaws, about to swallow a large egg. Almost 40 years later, in 1973, Ms. Wasson recounted their discovery in a letter to Cook County Forest Preserve Superintendent Roland Eisenbeis. The mound rises about six feet above the path and about 10 feet above the river. It trends northwest-southwest. When Theron, Mr. Wasson, and I located the mound, the open jaws were evident at the northeast end, and the egg still farther northeast was quite prominent. A good-sized tree grows out of the egg. The mound is made of river gravel mixed with black earth. The surrounding area is alluvium without gravel. The length, which is sinuous, is about 150 feet. After we reported the find to the Forest Preserve in 1935, someone there arranged to have Dr. Faye Cooper Cole, head of the anthropology department at the University of Chicago, come out to see the mound. We took him over and he authenticated it. He dug down in the head and located charcoal, but said it was not a burial mound, but a tribal effigy mound, used as a gathering place for ceremonies as they migrated along the Indian Trail along the Des Plaines River. Dr. Cole planned to have the mound studied and described, but World War II broke and it was never followed up. In fact, Faye Cooper Cole of the University of Chicago, whom we've discussed in previous videos related to Chicago area archeological sites, had been investigating locations in the U.S. Midwest for several years in the late 1920s and 1930s attempting to more methodically map and describe them. He would routinely send out his students, 
both undergraduate and graduate, to various reported locations to photograph and record their related artifacts and to assess them for further study and excavation. This new snake effigy site would have been one of the archaeological leads that the University of Chicago Anthropology Department made note of for future study. If proven true, it would have been an extraordinary archaeological find. It would represent the last effigy mound not destroyed by recent settlement, occupation, and industry remaining in Cook County, Illinois. Further, a verified effigy mound in the form of a serpent or snake and swallowing an egg no less is somewhat rare in North America, the primary example being the Great Serpent Mound in Adams County, Ohio, over 1,300 feet in length. A second and much smaller example has been described along Rice Lake in southern Ontario, Canada, on the order of 190 feet long. Given the potential of this new Thatcher Woods site, the fact that Cooper Cole did not immediately initiate a more detailed investigation is suggestive. It should be noted that the Wassons reported effigy mound was not the first Native American site to be reported for Thatcher Woods. Thatcher Woods was among the first Cook County forest preserves, the land having been purchased by the county in 1917. The land was once part of the estate of David Cunningham Thatcher, a prominent businessman and Chicago pioneer who died in River Forest in 1869. Amateur archaeologist Albert Scharf, in his writings and maps from the early 1900s, indicated that a Native American mound, along with a few associated burials, were to be found in this area. However, he placed this single mound 2,000 feet to the southeast of the Wassons reported mound site, near the northwest corner of the intersection of Chicago Avenue and Thatcher Avenue. He provided no further details regarding this mound site, but it does not seem likely that this reported mound or earthwork was the same as that described by the Wassons. In the 1940s, Isabel Wasson took local bird watchers and Audubon societies on outings to Thatcher Woods and to tour the mound site, which often proved to be the highlight of their trip. In the late 1950s and 60s, northeastern Illinois was hit by the Dutch elm disease blight, a fungus that ravaged the elm tree population of the area. Thousands of elm trees in northeastern Illinois, which had been affected by the disease, were taken down and destroyed, as were healthy trees, in an attempt to stem the spread of the blight. Thatcher Woods Forest Preserve was also hit by this scourge, and Forest Preserve work crews moved in to remove dead trees and to thin out the remaining elm population. In the course of this task, Wasson reported that a work truck had driven over the back, or northern flank, of the effigy damaging the area near the head. Ms. Wasson, who by now had become a natural history teacher in River Forest schools, often spoke of the Thatcher Woods Serpent Mound with her students. Local media took notice and began to describe the location as being a regional archaeological destination. Author Harriet Hausman, for example, described the site and the Wasson discovery in her 1975 book, Reflections, a history of River Forest. This too attracted the attention of the archaeological community. Northern Illinois University anthropology graduate student Carol A. Boris visited the site in the early 1980s and included it in her master's thesis, Effigy Mounds in Northern Illinois, an analysis of an endangered cultural resource. She described it as being approximately one and a half feet high with the tail and a portion of the body eroded by the river, and another portion demolished by a road cut. She also noted that the serpent's head had been cut through by a pathway, and that the egg feature was not discernible. In her own assessment, she viewed the earthwork as being anomalous in status, with insufficient evidence as being an effigy mount. Amateur archaeologist and civil engineer James A. Marshall also visited the site in July of 1984. Like the Wassons, Marshall was a well-trained surveyor and created a new drawing of the earthwork, now showing it as a somewhat lumpy serpent with a clipped tail. And it is noteworthy that Marshall's drawing indicates that the figure was on the order of 50 to 60 feet in length, significantly shorter than the Wasson description of 150 feet, even considering the clipped tail. 
Both Marshall and his surveying assistant admitted that the figure, such as it was, was very subtle in appearance and difficult to make out of the surrounding terrain. The first published description and drawing of the Thatcher Woods Serpent Mound was provided by Charles W. Markman in his 1991 book, Chicago Before History, The Prehistoric Archaeology of a Modern Metropolitan Area, where Markman included Marshall's topographical drawing from 1984. Marshall himself briefly discussed the site in his 1995 paper, Astronomical Alignments Claimed to Exist on the Eastern North American Prehistoric Earthworks and the Evidence and Arguments Against Them published in the spring 1995 Ohio Archaeologist Periodical. Due to its southwest to northeast orientation, Marshall concluded that the Thatcher Woods Serpent Mount figure was not aligned with any known astronomical phenomenon, such as the sunrises or sunsets. More recently, in the early 2000s, there was a push to restore the effigy mound to something more closely resembling the Wasson drawing and description from the 1930s, although that project has not yet proceeded further. The Illinois State Archaeological Survey has also investigated the site in recent years, but on their visits, they too had great difficulty in making out the snake effigy mound from surrounding lumps and bumps in the terrain, and were ultimately unsuccessful in doing so. As such, the Illinois State Archaeological Survey views the site as being unverified, from an archaeological perspective. We located the general location of the mound site by combining directions to the effigy mound as described in the 1980 time frame, along with modern-day LIDAR imaging. Our assessment indicates that the site is just north of the line extending from Augusta Street to the west in Maywood and Augusta Street to the east in River Forest, extending from near the riverside path to the northwest for about 60 feet. To find the site, we visited the Thatcher Woods Forest Preserve in late spring, before foliage and mosquitoes could overtake the area. The entrance to the Forest Preserve is along the north side of Chicago Avenue, between Thatcher Avenue to the east and First Avenue to the west. From the parking area, we walked along the southern edge of the open grove to the west of the pavilion, which leads into a wide trail at the southwest corner of the grove, heading west-southwest towards the Des Plaines River. The trail leads us to the riverbank, and from there we head north. Walking for a further distance of about a thousand feet brought us to the effigy mound site. Across the river, a concrete spillway from Silver Creek empties into the Des Plaines River from the west, serving as a landmark for the effigy mound site to the east. Looking over the Serpent Effigy Mound site today, it is difficult to discern any particular shape or form in the terrain. There are minor lumps, bumps, and ridges to be sure, but they follow no discernible pattern. Nor is there any discernible pattern on recent LIDAR maps. It is noteworthy that the proposed effigy sits in such a low area in proximity to the river, and that the topography falls away to a shallow depression or channel to the east. It is easy to imagine that this area becomes somewhat swampy after heavy rainfalls. In that respect, 
It is unlike most other effigy mound sites that we have visited in the past. Given the elusive nature of this effigy mound, being very difficult to discern for at least the past 40 years or more, how can archaeologists verify such an earthwork? How do they authenticate effigy mounds in general? Wasson described Faye Cooper Cole as having verified the mound in the 1930s, but that was based on a visual inspection and a few test pits, likely done with only a few hours of investigation. To actually validate an effigy mound would require much more extensive investigation. Where an effigy mound has poor definition, such as this one, or where it is in imminent danger of destruction, one of the first steps taken by archaeologists is to take cross-sections at one or more locations of the earthwork, carefully noting the stratigraphy of the soil. Ideally, the cross-section would clearly indicate the original ground surface beneath the mound, along with one or more layers of fill, typically taken from elsewhere, being deposited atop the original ground surface. Such a soil stratigraphy would strongly indicate construction of the mound by humans. The next important step would be to determine when the earthwork was constructed by finding datable artifacts within the fill material, such as lithics, potsherds, or even human bone, or possibly by carbon dating organic materials from the original ground surface identified in the soil stratigraphy. So what can be said about the mound that the Wassons described in the mid-1930s and in which Faye Cooper Cole himself saw some potential? The earthwork and its interpretation as a serpent-shaped effigy mound remain somewhat problematic. There are in fact two claims being made. The first, that it is an effigy mound, and the second, that it is in the very rare form of a serpent swallowing an egg. Taken together, it is an extraordinary claim. And as noted scientist and astronomer Carl Sagan often said, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. First, can the Wasson's earthwork be a possible effigy mound? Being along a major river system, such as the Des Plaines River, and where a creek drains into the river, that being Silver Creek from the west, is a strong mark in its favor, as most effigy and burial mounds are found near waterways, lakes, and river systems. This may be because human settlements were likewise located in such places, due to the need to be close to water for survival. Most effigy mounds and burial mounds, however, were placed at higher elevations, well above potential flood events, and also more highly visible to anyone passing along the river trail or someone passing in a canoe on the river. Perhaps, too, the higher elevations put their ritual sites closer to the spiritual forces that they hoped to enjoin. But the Thatcher Woods Serpent Effigy is located squarely in a floodplain, being only several feet above the Des Plaines River waterline. In fact, it is located on a low rise within this floodplain, which runs parallel to the riverbank, the ground falling away to the east before rising up again to a broad terrace, the large grove that includes the Thatcher Woods picnic area and pavilion. The Thatcher Woods Serpent Effigy location has likely seen a significant number of flood events over the past 1,000 years or more. In support of this observation, U.S. Geological Survey soil maps of the area confirm the fact that this low-lying shelf extending westward from the Groves Terrace to the river consists primarily of alluvial clays and soils, likely put down by water deposition and flood events. The earliest maps of the area also suggest the dynamic nature of the topography along this stretch of the Des Plaines River. Survey maps from 1820 onwards suggest that the river has shifted its course dramatically over the past few hundred years, meandering across the lowlands upon which the serpent effigy rests, especially in the early part of the 19th century. If these early survey maps are accurate, then the effigy feature actually once stood on the west bank of the river channel, its earlier course being the dry channel that is evident to the east of the effigy today. Then, during the 1830s, the river began shifting, meandering to the west of the effigy feature, 
where it has remained to this day. You can still see the earlier Eastern River Channel clearly in LIDAR images for the area. Based on the alluvial deposits across this floodplain basin, this is likely a process that has continued for hundreds of years or more. Floodplains such as these are constantly forming and reforming over the centuries. A few fallen trees, for example, can become a dam for sediments stirred up during a flooding event, leaving behind mounded sediments once the wood decays away. And so regarding the question of the Thatcher Woods Mound being an effigy mound of any form, possibly, but unusually and very precariously placed. The rarity, too, of the snake or serpent shape, with an egg in its jaws, is something to consider. For the few verified examples of such mounds, they are typically set on higher elevations, as part of a greater complex of mounds and earthworks. The Thatcher Wood Snake effigy, on the other hand, sits in a low-lying area and in relative isolation, the nearest known ancient earthwork being that of the former Kennecott Mounds, a mile to the north, or possibly the unverified Scharf Mound, 2,000 feet to the southeast. It is, of course, possible that other earthworks existed nearby and were destroyed prior to the early 1900s by more recent human occupations and industry, but there is as yet no evidence for that. And we know that early archaeologists and naturalists, such as William Stimson, Charles Kennicott, Carl Dilg, and Albert Scharf, did investigate this area from the mid-1800s to the early 1900s. And what do the additional observations provided by Wasson's 1973 letter tell us, such as where she noted that Faye Cooper Cole had found charcoal in the head of the effigy, or that the mound was constructed of gravel and black earth? As the charcoal was not dated, we unfortunately don't know if it was from a fire 1,000 years ago or 10 years prior to when Cooper Cole dug it from the earth. After all, in that time frame, the riverbanks were often the haunt of homeless people and transients. And the use of gravel as a building material for the mound would be most unusual, the presence of gravel instead suggesting formation by natural processes. And how is it that two surveys of the Thatcher Woods Mound, both done by competent and experienced surveyors, taken within 50 years of one another, differ significantly in the size of the serpent-shaped feature, the 1984 Marshall effigy being only one-third the size of the original Wasson description from the 1930s, even allowing for a missing tail. In defense of the Marshall survey, they admitted that the mound's features were almost indiscernible in the terrain at the time of their survey in 1984. And in defense of both surveys, this dynamic alluvial area along the river has likely seen multiple flood events since the mid-1930s. In fact, local newspapers indicate that these low-lying areas in Thatcher Woods routinely filled with water during springtime thaws and major rainfalls likely as they had been doing for hundreds of years. Such flooding events would have had the effect of erasing earlier features while creating new ones. Other flood control activities during that time period, such as dredging and tree cutting, may have also altered the terrain along the riverbanks. We have no doubt that the Wassons observed something resembling a serpentine form along the east banks of the Des Plaines River almost 100 years ago. It was enough to convince noted University of Chicago anthropologist Faye Cooper Cole that the site should be further investigated. But given the dynamic nature of these centuries-old floodplains, as they have formed and reformed many times over the past 1,000 years or more, it is at least questionable as to how much weight to give this initial observation. For our own part, we would very much like to believe that the last remaining effigy mound in Cook County lies within these river sediments along the western edge of Thatcher Woods, and even more so that it possesses the remarkable form of a serpent swallowing an egg. But there is as yet not much hard evidence to support that conjecture, beyond an initial observation of subtle figures in the topography of a fairly dynamic terrain. The jury is still out, of course, but this may be a case where the Des Plaines River itself is the architect of the serpent-shaped earthwork, creating and destroying her works like an unsatisfied artist over the course of centuries. 
If you enjoy these videos, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, and share. Thank you as always for watching, and we'll see you, in a manner of speaking, in our next video adventure.